السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I think everybody is hungry today. Where's the energy? السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I know we're in Ramadan. I know we're fasting. The door is almost half of the door, so inshallah, we got a few. We got less than two hours. So inshallah, let's be patient. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ورضي الله مع الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحابه أجمعين وبرز الله سبحانه وتعالى and we send blessings and salutations upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we thank Allah for showing us again Ramadan this year and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to the end and may he show us many 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 more years to come inshallah and I'm not going to take too much time inshallah our topic today is it's going to be about the knowledge of the Quran about the knowledge of Quran and we have our brother Sheikh Abu Jafar, inshallah, you will be leading the, the, the topic, you will be talking about the Quran, inshallah. So before that happens, inshallah, we will give it to uh, our reciters here, we have Suleiman and Seku, and inshallah, they will start with the recitation of Quran, bi'idhillahi ta'ala. So inshallah, uh, Seku, inshallah, you can start. إنه قد جيء 
أمر ربك وإنهم آتيهم عذاب غير مردود ولما جئت رسولنا لوطا سيء بهم وضيق بهم ذوعا وقال هذا يوم عصيب وجيئهم قوم يهرعون إليه ومن قبل كانوا يعملون السيئات قال يا قوم هؤلاء بناتي هن أطهر لكم فاتقوا الله ولا تخزون في ضيفي أليس منكم رجل رشيد قالوا لقد علمت ما لنا في بناتك من حق وإنك لتعلم ما نريد قال لو أنني بكم قوة أو آوي إلى ركن شديد قالوا يا لوط إنا رسل ربك لك يصلوا إليك فأسر بأهلك بقطع من الليل ولا يلتفت منكم أحد إلا امرأتك إنه مصيبها ما أصابهم إن موعدهم الصبح أليس الصبح بقريب أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد جاءت رسلنا إبراهيم بالبشرى قالوا سلاما قال سلام فما لبث أن جاء بعجل حنيف فلما رئي أيديهم لا تصل إليه نكرهم وأوجس منهم خيفة قالوا لا تخف إن I am 
and we send our salutations to our brother Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions and whoever follows their footsteps until the day of judgment. Haqiqatan, we are really running out of time. Uh, but before we start, I would like to inform everyone that um, this class um, is basically what we call a daura. It's not a lecture that you just sit down and listen. You have to take out your phone or have a piece of paper and write down the information that you will um, learn, inshallah ta'ala. It's basically something that we call yani, a daura bukathafa or daura ilmiya. It's like a class. But the class is like we just come together in an hour or two hours and get to learn um, a lot in those um, two hours. We have a barcode that um, everyone can scan after we um, finish the daura. Um, this barcode is for you to just sign up your information and you will get a certificate from Martha Jafar Ta'ala showing that you attended the daura. But this is what the daura is about. And um, inshallah in the future we will really have lots of daurahs because that's something that we normally do not have here. Um, we have a group that we started um, working on these kind of things. Um, 
uh, we have a group and um, we are in contact with scholars outside the country and in the country. In the future, we will have things like this. Um, the reason why we even have in this daura is we're not done with the group yet. So they advise me, even though the group is not ready, if I come for me to have a daura under my own markas, which is Markas Jafar. Um, that's the reason why we have in this daura. I pray may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it beneficial. Now, we're running out of time. Or else, the daura, we have seven chapters, or eight chapters, seven chapters that we want to talk about. And um, it's about the Quran. Um, when we talk about Quran, you know, we always talk about um, the benefit of reciting Quran and uh, those kind of stuff, alhamdulillah. But today, we wanted to talk about Ta'rif al Quran. What is the meaning of Quran itself? And then the Quran was revealed to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Tariq al Wahi. What is the meaning of Wahi? What is the meaning of Wahi? And how was the Wahi coming down to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How was Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala giving the message to Jibreel? How Jibreel was giving the message to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We won't be talking about that. We will be talking about Nuzul al Quran. For Nuzul al Quran, scholars have few um, opinions. We will be talking about that. And we will be talking about the surahs um, Maki and Madani, the Maki surahs and the Madani surahs. You know, how can we open the, you know, when we open the Quran, you look at the top of the surah, it, it tells you whether it's a Maki or Madani. But let's say, for example, it's not there. How can you just look at a surah and know that this surah is a Maki surah or Madani surah? We want to, we will be talking about that as well. Number five is Al Jam, Al Jam. You know, they compile the Quran, they combine the Quran together. How the Quran came to us? How did we receive the Quran? You know, without missing a single word. Three types. We're gonna talk about them, inshallah. Number six is gonna be Al Nasikh wal Mansur. There are some verses in the Quran was erased. There are some rulings in the Quran that were erased. That um, it was erased, basically. Father, and uh, there, um, there are a few types. And the last, we will be talking about the Qira'at as well. The Ashab al Qira'at and the Ruwais. For like, and we really run out of time. So, we probably might skip some steps. We in the and the Dawra itself, um, our original plan was for it to be two days. For us to have one day and the second day we have, you know, will complete. But, you know, due to circumstances, we couldn't do that. Well, if, uh, we probably might skip some points, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Fa'awwalan, ta'riful Qur'an. What is the meaning of Qur'an? Scholars, some of them said, the meaning behind Qur'an, bima'na ta'ala. Eh, it means something that you recite. You know, Quran means something that you should do recites. Some scholars said the meaning behind Quran is min al qalb, bimana al jamr. It means something that you compile together. So anything that you recite, it can be called Quran. Or anything that you compile, you can you know combine together, you compile them together, it can also be called al Quran. This is the meaning behind Quran linguistically. Like in Amma Istilahan, whenever we say Quran, we are talking about Karamullah Ta'ala Al Munazan Ala Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we're talking about Al Quran, according to our Sharia, whenever we say Al Quran, we are talking about the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, since we talked about saying that the Quran is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's something else that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will always say, Qala Allah ta'ala, which is the hadith al-Qudsi. So now we must know the difference between al-hadith al-Qudsi and the Quran itself. Because some scholars said the hadith al-Qudsi is also the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now what is the difference between them? Al-Quran, there's a lot of difference, but as I said, I'm just going to mention two of them, inshallah ta'ala. Al-Quran, Al-Kareem, whenever we are reciting the Quran, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting the Quran. 
But amma hadith al-Qudsi, we do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting it. The second difference we have is Al-Quran, we recite Al-Quran while we are praying. But Hadith Al-Qudsi, we do not recite, um, we do not recite Hadith Al-Qudsi while we are praying. For example, someone is like, um, I do not memorize a verse from the Quran. Can I just go ahead and recite a Hadith in you know, a Hadith Al-Qudsi? You're gonna say no, you cannot do that. Even though it's still the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now Asma'u Al-Qur'an, the names of Qur'an. It have few names. Minhum Al-Kitab. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned Alif Lam Mim, Dhalik Al-Kitab. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala called the Qur'an Al-Kitab. Wa kathalika Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala called this Qur'an Al-Dhikr. Where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Inna nahnu nazzalna al-dhikra. Wa inna lahu lahafidhu. وَكَذَلِكَ is called Al-Furqan as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُرْقَانَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ وَكَذَلِكَ is called Al-Nur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا So these are all the names of Qur'an. The Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in the Qur'an itself, He has Awsaf Aiba, the man attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he called this Quran Mubarak. It's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa hadha kitabun anzalnahu mubarakun li adabbaru ayati. Hakada sah. Fa wa kadhalika Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called this Quran Huda wa Rahma. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Huda wa Rahmatan lil muhsini. But this is the definition of Quran. Now this Quran, it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Tariq Al-Wahi. What is the meaning of Al-Wahi? The Quran, it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Tariq Al-Wahi. What is the meaning of Al-Wahi? Al-Wahi, they said it means I'lamun fi khafa. I'lamun fi khafa. Bimana to inform someone secretly. You come and there's five people sitting down and then you inform someone secretly and the others do not know what did you inform that person about. They said this is something they call Al-Wahi. Yani kaba qala al-Raghib al-Asfahani. Lakin, there's another meaning behind Al-Wahi. They said it means an information that passed Fast. The man is something like um, an information that you can pass around so quick. This is what al-wahy means. يعني إعلام الخفي السريع الخاص بمن يوجه إليه. You come and you have five people sitting down, and you able to inform that person real quick. You know, and you have a specific person you want to inform. Rather, they said this is what al-wahy means. أما إصطلاحا أو شرعا أيضا. Scholars they differ. About the meaning behind al-wahi. So I can get out of here. Um, scholars, they talked about the meaning behind Al-Wahyu uh, Shara'an. They said, Huwa kalamu Allahi ta'ala al-munazzalu ala ahadi anbiya'i. It's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, that will be revealed to one of his prophets. So now our question here, what is the difference between the meaning behind Al-Wahyu and the meaning behind Al-Quran? Huh, who knows? I mentioned that the, huh? the meaning behind Al-Wahyu is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will be revealed to one of his messengers or one of his prophets. What is the difference between this and Quran? Quran was revealed to one prophet? Jameel, the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, specifically to him. 
فاما الوحي is not specifically to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم لان الله الله سبحانه وتعالى he will send wahy to the other prophets as well for example prophet Ibrahim prophet Musa Isa he sent wahy to them as well واضح so this is the difference between them فالوحي it has you know different ways اولا ما يكون مناما there is a type of wahy that comes to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while he is sleeping. Bimana, he will come to the Prophet as a form, uh, you know, a form as a dream. It's gonna be like a dream. Father, a form, you know, it's like he's dreaming or something like that. Father, so he came in a hadith where um, Aisha radiallahu anha said, Awwalu ma budiya bihi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min al-wahi al-ru'ya al-saliha. He will see something in his dream and whenever he wakes up, it actually happens. So this is the first type of wahi. The second type of wahi is ma kana mukalama bayna al-abd wa rabbi. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to the person. Wallahi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to the prophet um, himself. There is no, you know, messenger. The prophet will hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words directly. This is the type of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talked to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam wa kallama Allah Musa taklima. And Allah SWT said, وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَىٰ لِمِيقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّ And just for um, faida, this type of wahi, this wahi that we have, this is the wahi that the Prophet SAW, uh, this is the wahi that came to the Prophet SAW when um, salah was becoming wajib. When the Prophet SAW went up to the um, um, seventh heaven, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the Prophet SAW, but he did not see Allah. And this is the type of wahi Qur'an became wajib. Through the Quran became one through this way. The third one is Mayakumu Ilham. And Ilham is for someone to just be sitting now and you feel like someone just told you go check the room, your kid is causing trouble. And you just get up and go and you find him causing trouble. This is what they call Al Ilham. For this is also another type of wahi. Yeah, the Prophet sallam, sometimes they will be sitting down and they will find something will just tell them something is going on and it actually happens. The last type is the one that comes, you know, through a messenger, which is Jibreel alayhi salatu alayhi salam. And this wahi that we have, the fourth one, the last one we just mentioned, Quran came down through this wahi only. Quran didn't come through the first or second or third. This is the only type of wahi Quran came down through. So when it comes to the wahi as well, كَيْفِيَةُ وَحِي اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the angel of the wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he informs the angels by talking to them. He came in a hadith. Uh, hadith uh, of Nawaz ibn Sam'an رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أراد الله تعالى أن يو يعني if Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants to um, give a wahi or send a messenger تكلم بالوحي Allah سبحانه وتعالى will talk with wahi بمعنى he will inform them فإذا تكلم after Allah سبحانه وتعالى talks you will find you know the heavens shaking and the angels, they were all. فَإِذَا سَمِعَ ذَلِكَ أَهْلُ السَّمَاوَاتِ سُعِقُوا وَخَرُوا لِلَّهِ سُجَّدًا Whenever the angels hear, they will fall on their knees and perform sujood for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first angel that will raise his head, it will be Jibreel. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَيُكَلِّمُهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inform him with the wahi. And then Jibreel will pass by the other angels. They will ask Jibreel, what did Allah, ماذا قال ربك? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? And then Jibreel will say to them, Allah said, قَالَ الْحَقِّ so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs the angels. Now we will move on to how the angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, how does he inform the messenger, which is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The um, Jibreel alayhi salam, he informs the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, two ways. The first way is when he is coming. Surah Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam When the Wahi is coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He will hear like a sound 
this is the subtlety of jazz. The sound is like when you have, um, we could say like a bell, or you have like two um, metals and you hit them together, the sound that comes out. This is the sound that the Prophet ﷺ hears when um, the angel is coming to him. So, uh, the second type is, Jibreel will come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fi surat rajulid. He will come to the Prophet Sallallahu in a person's picture. In a person's picture. As it came that the um, Jibreel used to come to the Prophet Sallallahu fi surat yani Dihya al-Kalbi. There was a Sahaba named Dihya al-Kalbi. The Prophet um, Jibreel used to come to the Prophet Sallallahu in his picture. Imara, when you see him, you will think Dihya al kalbi is sitting down, but it's not really him, it's Jibreel alayhi salam. Wa as he came in the, um, one of the famous hadith, uh, that Jibreel came, and he came as a man, you know, a traveler or something like that, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, <coughs> we really, really run out of time, I probably may escape the Muzul al-Quran. I will skip that and then we will go to the Maki and Madani. The, the time, um, how can we know if a surah, um, is, um, if a surah will be called a surah of Mecca or the surah will be called a surah of Medina? How can we um, know the difference between this? Scholars, they disagree into three different, you know, aqwal. Some said, it depends on the, the time the ayah was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Zaman al-Nuzul The ones that said the Zaman al-Nuzul is when we will be able to know the difference between the surahs that, were, that we can call the Makkah surahs and the surahs that we can call the Medina surahs So they said that from the moment the Prophet Sallallahu did Hijrah from Mecca to Medina, whatever came down after that is considered as a surah from Medina. The surahs that came down before he migrated to Medina, those are all considered as surah from Mecca. al qawl al-thani, the second saying is, Makkah al-Nuzul, where the ayah or the surah, you know, came down, where? They said if the surah came down in Mecca, it's gonna be a surah of Mecca. If it came down in Medina, it's going to be a surah of Medina. We all know that the Prophet Sallam, after he migrated to Mecca, Medina, he came back to where? He came back to Mecca for Umrah, right? For, and for Hajj as well. And there are a few verses that came down to the Prophet Sallam while he was at Mecca. So they said those verses are still considered as verses of Mecca, even though he did Hijrah. I don't know if you guys understand the difference. How can it? But they said it depends on where the ayah was revealed. Um, the third saying is يعني المعتبر بالمخاطب بالسورة It depends who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to in, in the surah If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the people of Mecca, it's a Mecca surah If he is referring to the people of Medina, it's a surah of Medina Like in this قول, which is the قول الثالث, is not really that strong The most strong, the, most, the strongest one is um, the first one all well, in the first one. Lianna, the second saying as well, there are some verses um, that came down to the Prophet Sallallahu He was not in Mecca, and he was not in Medina as well. He was like, for example, when they went for the um, battle, they went for like a couple of battles, and then Ayas came down to the Prophet Sallallahu So where are we gonna put those two, um, these surahs? Are they gonna be from Mecca or Medina? You know, there's still like a gap that we cannot fill. So there's a, the most authentic one is the ones that said it depends on the Zaman, when the Surah was revealed. If it was before the migration, it will be as Mecca. If it's after migration, it will be considered a Surah of uh, Medina. Now there's something that scholars, subhanAllah, they really tried their best to let us know how can we tell uh, you know, Lianna, for us to know the difference between the Makkah surahs and the Medina surahs, you're going to have to know the history. When did this surah came down? Which year? Right? And that's really hard. Like in, they came with some stuff that shows us if you see that in a surah, you will get to know that this surah is from um, a Makkah surah or Medina surah. And how can we be able to know these? You know, yani, uh, as Samari. And sometimes like, you hear that like, your teacher tells you that this is this and then you get to know well, 
sometimes like they do al qiyas as well all right so most of the times like when this happened it's going to be a Makkah surah. So they put these two together and they was able like, to come with um, some differences. For before we move on to um, the Dawabi, they, you know, talked about Kam Adad, yani, uh, Surah al makiyah The amount of the Surah al makiyah and the amount of Surah al madaniyah As Suyuti Rahmanullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that the Surah uh, of Medina is, is 20. It's only 20 surahs that we can call the Madani surahs. And scholars disagreed in 12 surahs, whether it's Medina or Makkah. So 20 is from Medina. And they disagreed in 12. And whatever is left, Ma'adazali, is a surah that they consider as a Makkah surah, and which is 82. Now let's come to the Dawabi. How can, it's a lot, but I'm just gonna mention a um, couple of them. Scholars said, any surah you see in the Quran that has the word kalla, that has the word kalla, fahiyya makiyya, it's a Makkah surah. If you, you know, recite in the Quran and you come across a word that says kalla, they said it's considered as a Makkah surah. They said, any surah as well you recite from the Quran that has a sajda tilawah. Sajda tilawah is when you recite in the Quran, you come to like across um, those, it has an alama that you have to perform sujood. They said this is a Makkah surah. Uh, or in surah al Ra'ad, surah al Ra'ad, there's a sajda tilawah there, like in fi'i khilaf. They disagreed whether it's a Makkah surah or Medina surah. But what, you know, ma'ala surah al Ra'ad, surah al Ra'ad, it's a Makkah surah. وَكَذَلِكَ any surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the surah with Al-Qasam He started the surah with Al-Qasam بِمَعْنَا swearing وَالْفَجْرِ وَالشَّمْسِ بِمَعْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by the, by the sun you know وَالْدُحَى they said all these surahs are considered as Makkah surahs any surah in the Quran that started with Al-Qasam they said it's considered as a Makkah surah the Dawabid of the surahs that came, um, that are considered as the Medina surahs, any surah, this Dawabid that I'm about to mention is the Aks, Bimana is a vice, vice versa. So let me just mention, I was going to skip it. Um, any surah you find in the Quran that has Ya Ayyuhan Nas, Walaysa Fiha Ya Ayyuhan Ladina Amanu, any surah in the Quran that has Ya Ayyuhan Nas, but the whole entire surah does not have Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu They said the surah is a Makkah surah Alright, so I gave you guys four, right? So now let's go with the Medina surahs The Medina surahs as well is the vice versa Any surah that you see Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu And it does not have Ya Ayyuhal Nas Is considered as a Medina surah They said again any surah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the hypocrites is considered as a Medina surah. Except Surah Al-Ankabut. Surah Al-Ankabut is a Makkah surah. So these are just the wabit that you kind of memorize if you want to know the difference. Well then, so any surah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the, you know, he talked about the hypocrites. They said the surah is a Medina surah except Surah Al-Ankabut. And some scholars say, Waqeel, they said, Awwal Surah al ankabut They said the beginning of Surah al ankabut where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually talked about the hypocrites, that beginning, the beginning of that Surah is a Medina Surah, as, um, actually. So some scholars came with that. al muhim Number three, any Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a had. al-Hudud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a had bimana if you do this they have to like um, whoop you like 80 times or they have to do this to you. Any surah you find in the Quran that has like these kind of rulings, they said the surah is gonna be considered as um, a Medina surah as well. We have another thing that we call fawaid and the, the benefits um, for knowing the different um, the Makkah surahs and the Medina surahs. Uh, one of the benefits, I'm just going to mention one and move on. One of the, I have five here, but I'm going to just mention one. One of the benefits is, if you are actually someone 
you know, you have the demand with the Quran, especially like when it comes to tafsir or ma'ala dhalik. You know, it's really important to know the surahs that came in, um, that came down in Mecca and Medina as well. Limada lianna, when you are doing the tafsir, there are something that they call a nasib wal mansur. So whenever you come across a surah, Allah mentioned a ruling, and that surah was a Mecca surah. And you come across another surah, which is a Medina surah, Allah mentioned a ruling, Bimana, that ruling, you cannot combine it with the other ruling, you just will realize that this is something that they call an nasif al mansur Bimana, the ruling was erased by the surah that came down in Medina. So this is one of the benefits that you get to, um, you need. Um, the, the, one of the benefits that shows us that you need to know the difference between the surah that came in Medina, uh, Mecca and Medina. Now, the chapter we are about to talk about, which is Jamr al-Qur'an. This topic is very important, which is the Jamr al-Qur'an. When we talk about Jamr al-Qur'an, Qur'an being compiled, right? Compiled. Qur'an being compiled, um, it has two meanings. Sometimes, when scholars talk about Qur'an being compiled, they are talking about bimana, you know, um, hifduhu fi sudur, fi sudur. The Qur'an being memorized in the hearts. When they talk about Qur'an being compiled, they're talking about people memorizing the Qur'an by heart. And the second time, when they talk about al-jam, they're talking about kitabatuhu wa tadwinu. You know, writing down the Qur'an, how they wrote down the Qur'an, how they came, you know, sometimes like you will have one eye in a piece of paper, in another eye in, a, in another piece of, not a piece of paper, a piece of uh, what they used to have, like they used to write on uh, something that they call a jil, you know, jil in the Huh? Letter. letter, right? Yeah, they used to write down on letters, um, letters and stuff. So you will see one of the companions will have a letter that he wrote an eye. And another companion will have another letter all the way at the other side of the country. So how they came and combined these together. So when we talk about Jamr, we're talking about these two. Well then, so the first Jamr, which is um, the memorization of the Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu he himself memorized the Quran with no doubt. The Prophet Sallallahu he memorized the Quran. Jibreel will come to the Prophet Sallallahu um, the early stages of Wahi, the Prophet used to kind of be nervous and scared. When the ayah, when Jibreel comes to him with the ayah, you know, Jibreel will be telling him the ayah and he will be reciting the ayah. And you will find out that like there's a lack of, you know, let's say communication or something like that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, La tuharrik bihi lisanaka lita'ajalabi. You know, do not rush. Just let Jibreel tell you everything. Um, just let him inform you about everything. And then you go ahead and, you know, inform others. So the Prophet used to memorize it. Alright? The Prophet memorized the whole entire Quran. There are Sahabas during the Prophet Sallallahu time as well who memorized the Quran. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum the Quran. The Sahabas, they actually memorized the Quran. Um, it's a couple of them, you know, it's a lot of them, let me say. It's a lot of them that memorized the Quran. Men whom al Khulafa al Rashid. Al Khulafa al Rashid. Which is Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. Some scholars will come and say that they did not memorize the Quran. Like in Ibn Uthaymin, rahmahullah ta'ala, he said, Ana has tabi'at zalik. He said, I do not agree with that. How can Abu Bakr and Umar be there without memorizing the Quran? He did not agree with that at all. Well, then, so in that case, um, amongst the people that memorized the Quran, from the Muhajirin, um, the people that came from Mecca, is Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, وكذلك Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, وكذلك Huzayfa, وكذلك Salim ibn Mawla, يعني Abi Huzayfa, رضي الله عنهم أجمعين. These are all companions that memorize the Quran, and these are the companions that we call the, um, the ones that migrated from Mecca to and Medina. Amongst the Ansar, the people, the Sahabas from Medina, that memorize the Quran, amongst them is Ubay ibn Ka'ab, wa Mu'ayyid ibn Jabal, wa Zayd ibn Thabit, wa Abu Darda, wa Abu Zayd. These are also companions that um, memorize the Quran. The Manzuma of um, Zamzari. Um, he mentioned Zamzamiya. He mentioned that Ali Uthman, Ubayyun Zaidu, Walibnu Mas'udin, Bihada Sa'adu. 
كذا أبو زيد أبو الدرداء كذا معاذ بن جبل معاذ بن جبل وهكذا عنهم أبو هريرة مع ابن عباس ابن سائب والمعني واضح هي مشان صمدة سيوطي رحم الله تعالى دمع مشا النور الثاني the second type of jam that's the second type of jam is how did they write down the Quran writing down the Quran they compiled the Quran three different times الجمع الأول they compiled the Quran and wrote the Quran during the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم this is the first jam the second jam it happened during the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq رضي الله عنه the third jam that happened during the time of Uthman ibn Affan رضي الله عنه so inshallah we're gonna mention we're gonna talk about um the jamas that happened during the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم you know we're gonna talk about each um each one of them being like the Ali the first jam which is this is um, the jamr that they call um, during the time of the Prophet when an ayah is revealed to the Prophet he had a couple of companions that he will call they will come and write down the ayahs that you know were revealed to him and these sahabas we refer to them as kutab al wahi these are the sahabas that write down the wahi the kutab al wahi minhum aydan al khulafa al arba'ah the Khulafa al-Arba'a, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, wa kathalika Zayd ibn Thabit, wa kathalika Ubay ibn Ka'ab, Mu'awiyata ibn Abi Sufyan, wa Khalid ibn Sa'id ibn Al-Az, wa Zubayr ibn Al-Awwan, wa kathalika Amir ibn Fuhayra, wa Amr ibn Al-Az. These are the Sahabas that are called Kutab al-Wah. Bima'ana, when Jibreel comes to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم with an ayah, the Prophet ﷺ will call one of these companions. He will call them, they will come and sit down. The Prophet ﷺ will tell them, he will tell them the ayah that was revealed to him, um, him, and they will write down the ayah. The Prophet ﷺ, he will tell them, put this ayah in this surah. Put this ayah in Surah Al-Anfal, and put this ayah in Surah Tawbah, Hakadha. Well, the, the Prophet ﷺ will tell them what to do. زيد بن ثابت رضي الله عنه يقول كنا عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نؤلف القرآن. you know we used to be during the time of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we used to write down the Quran. بمعنى he will inform us and then we will go ahead and write down the Quran. someone might let's skip this إن شاء الله. the second jump the second jump that happened during the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq رضي الله عنه. The reason behind this jump. The reason behind this jump. After the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away, there's a battle that they call حروب الردة. Some hypocrites or some of them, what happened? They they were Muslims during the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Some of them, right after the Prophet passed away, they went back to their old, their old um, religion. And Wakadanika, after the Prophet passed away, a very big fitna came out, which is the fitna of Musaylam, Musaylam al Kazak. His fitna came. So Abu Bakr al Siddiq, he gathered the Sahabas together for them to go and fight Musaylam al Kazak. The Sahabas, they came together, they went out and they fought the battle. It was a very a tough battle for them because the Prophet ﷺ just passed away. He just passed away, you know. So they didn't have that good communication that time. Like some of them were like, you know, lots of things were going on. Some of them did not even want to give their zakat to Abu Bakr anymore. So Allah was going on. So they left and they went to fight that battle. When they went to fight the battle, Lots of the Sahabas that memorized, um, lots of the Sahabas that memorized the Quran, lots of them were killed during that battle. Lots of them were killed. So Umar ibn Khattab, and this hadith it came in Bukhari. Umar ibn Khattab, 
when this happened, he came to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu When he came to Abu Bakr, he said to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, you know, lots of the Sahabas passed away. Lots of them, they memorized the Quran. Ana ara, I see that you must call on to the Sahabas that memorized the Quran for them to write the whole Quran. We might have combined the whole Quran and have the Quran together. Because right now, the Sahabas, some of them will have like 10 eyes. And others will have like another 10 eyes. But that one has like the 10 eyes that this other one doesn't have. So now if all of them pass away like that, there will be some verses in the Quran that we wouldn't get anymore. So before all of them pass away, what we need is for us to combine the whole Quran, compile the Quran, and for us to have a Mus'haf. We matter for us to have a Quran. Umar said this to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Abu Bakr said, when Umar said this to him, he said to Umar radiallahu you want me to do something that the Prophet sallallahu did not do while he was alive? Never, I'm not doing it. Abu Bakr said, Umar continued, he continued coming to me every single day, Abu Bakr, you still don't think it's the right thing to do? I would say no. The next day he will come again, you don't think it's the right thing? No. The next day he come again until I found out that yes, I feel like what Umar said is really the right thing to do. And Abu Bakr called a Sahaba, which is Zaid ibn Thabit. Zaid ibn Thabit, he is among the Sahabas that used to write down the Wahi. You guys remember? He is among the Sahabas that they call the Kutab al Wahi. Abu Bakr called Zaid ibn Thabit. When he called Zaid ibn Thabit, he said to Zaid, lots of Sahabas passed away. You know, Mani, he told him about the story. And Abu Bakr told Zaid what he wanted him to do. He wanted Zaid to go ahead and, you know, ask people of, um, uh, no, ask people that, um, that have real verses of the Quran, look for the verses that are hidden, combine them together. Well, then, for this is what he wanted Zaid to do. For Zaid said, when Abu Bakr said it to him, he also felt deep, deep down that Abu Bakr wanted me to do something that the Prophet didn't do. So this is what he said as well. And he said Abu Bakr also started, you know, coming to him, convincing him, until he also felt like this is actually um, the right thing to do. Zaid, he said, for Allah, لو كلفوني نقل جبل من الجبال ما كان أثقل علي مما أمرني به. سبحان الله. He said, if Abu Bakr was to inform me, if Abu Bakr was to um, command me to remove a mountain from a place and take the mountain to a different place, it would have been easier for what he told me to do. I will go and combine the whole Quran together, subhanAllah. Like in Zayn, he said, Quran. He said, I followed up with the Quran, I will go to every single house and find out if they have an ayah that I do not have. He said until I was able to find the last, um, you know, the last part of Surah Tawbah, Ma Abi Khuzaima. There's a Sahaba that they call Abu Khuzaima, Al Ansari. He was the only one that had the part, you know, the last part of Surah Tawbah. He was the only Sahaba that had the part. So he said, I followed up until I came to Abu Khuzayma and I found out that he had, he's the only one that had the last part of Surah At-Tawbah, which is Surah Baraha. So he com compiled everything together in a Mus'haf, and he took it to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu So he left it with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. So this is the second jump. This is the, the second jump. Now let me ask a question. Okay, let me move on. The reason behind them choosing, the reason behind them choosing Zayd ibn Sabit, radiallahu anhu, they had the jam, it's gonna go back to what I said. Then he was someone that used to read, um, write down the wahi. 
and he was someone that was a trustworthy person as well. Was it? Like in Manhaj Zaid, when Zaid was combining, compiling this Quran together, he had a manhaj. Bimana, the manhaj is, he does not go to every single person that has something of, um, a part in the Quran and just take it from them. Like, the first thing is, whenever you have something and he wants to um, accept that from you, it has to be something that you yourself wrote down during the time of the Prophet You wrote it down when the Prophet was alive. The second one is, or is something that you memorize, it's already memorized with you. Well, it's already in your heart. You memorize this during the time of the Prophet And the third thing is, whenever he is accepted from the people that wrote it down, he does not accept it as, until he has two witnesses that will come and say, yes, I think I also heard it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Limadha, li'anna this jamma right here, if this Qur'an was not authentic, we wouldn't have authentic Qur'an today. Then this was the first jamma. And among the things Zaid ibn Thabit did as well is, I forgot to mention this, um, the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet um, upon something that they call Al-Ahruf al-Sabah. Al-Ahruf al-Sabah. Al al you know, the seven, let's say seven, seven times of, it's not language, seven different types or something like that. You have a better explanation? Uh, Ahruf al -Sabah. Seven different methods. Methods. Seven different methods. Jazakallah khairah. Seven different methods. Um, I'm trying to give an example. For example, if you ever went to Egypt, when they are mentioning the, the letter Jim, when they're talking, and the letter Jim is amongst the sentence, they don't mention the Jim, they mention it as a what? A ha, kind of, right? Ga, as a ga. So when the Quran was being revealed, so it's something that for, um, the people of Quraysh, they can mention Jim. But the people of Misr, they cannot mention the gene, they mention God. So it won't be okay for you to be studying as a gene and a God. For example, this is just an example. Was it? For if, even if you look at it, our local language, we have some words that we do not have in Arabic language. Oh, yeah. Oh, what did it chat? Chat. Uh, like what? It to be easier for others to also recite it. Even though in their language they don't really speak like that. So, the last stage, the Jibreel used to come to our Prophet Sallam every single year. He used to come to our Prophet Sallam every single year and, you know, they would recite the Quran together. So the last year before the Prophet Sallam passed away, when Jibreel came, that's what they call Al-Aradatul Akhira. When Jibreel came there for the last time, the last time when he came to the Prophet ﷺ, the way they recited the Quran during that last time, then this is the only way Zayd bin Thabit took. Well, then, this is the only way he took. He did not go with the others. He took only one manhaj, which is the last um, uh, method, and everyone will follow, will follow that method. Well, then, طيب. So when he was combining the Quran, these are the, the this is the manhaj he had. So um, let's move on to the third jump. We're running out of time. So the third jump, the third jump. This is the jump that happened during the time of Uthman ibn Affan. The reason behind this jump also happened during the time of Uthman ibn Affan. When Zaid ibn Thabit, when he put the Quran together, who did he give it to? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Abu Bakr passed away. Abu Bakr gave the Quran. They had only one copy that had everything together. Only one single copy. Abu Bakr took this copy. He gave it to Umar ibn Khattab. When Umar ibn Khattab passed away, his daughter, which is Hafsa, Hafsa had that copy. The copy was with Hafsa. So Uthman ibn Affan, during his time, during the time of Uthman ibn Affan, you know, the Muslim population started growing, right? They started like, going to, you know, Sham and other countries. Well, when they started growing, when
when they started growing, they started moving on to other countries. So what happened was, people started disagreeing with each other. It came to a point where, I'm you know, saying the story briefly, because we have run out of time. It came to a point where they would actually even call each other kufar. You are reciting the Quran away, and someone also, someone also reciting the Quran in a different method, and you will tell that person, if you do not believe in the way I am reciting this Quran, that means you are a Catholic. Because this Quran was not revealed to a person like that. Father, so this is something that they, that happened. You know, we you know we went to um, it was um, a battle that happened, and Osman ibn Affan he um he put the shortest um, um soldiers together from Armenia or Azerbaijan. You know, from these countries they came together, and there were soldiers that came from Iraq, and other soldiers came from Sham, and this is where Bahrain and other you know this is where all of this happened. Was it? He was a monster. When he saw people disagreeing and calling each other kufar because of this, he said, Wallah, la arkabanna ila amir al mu'minin. I will go to the, um, the leader of the believers, which is Uthman ibn Affan, and tell him about this thing that's going on between, the, uh, between people. So when Hudayfa went to Uthman ibn Affan, when he arrived, Uthman ibn Affan, he himself found this, you know, this kind of problem going on in Medina itself. So when Hudayfa came and informed him, Uthman said, you know what, we really need to get up and do something about this. Father, so um, Uthman ibn Affan, he, you know, commanded few Sahabas to go ahead and combine, um, go to Hafsa and get the Mus'haf that Hafsa was having. You know the Quran, it was with Hafsa, right? So he said to the companions, Zayn was amongst them, for them to go to Hafsa and take the copy that Hafsa has. After they take that copy, for them to make different copies. Well then, they went to Hafsa, um, and the people he chose, let me just mention that briefly, the people he chose was Zayd ibn Thabit, he himself. The reason why he chose Zayd was, Zayd is the one that um, compiled that, the first one. So he chose Zayd himself. Wa he chose Abdullah ibn Zubayr, wa kadhalika Sa'id ibn Al-As, wa kadhalika Abdurrahman ibn Al-Hadith. So these four, he commanded them to go and take the Quran that they had. And have different copies of this Quran. Was it? So they went and took this Quran. They had different copies of this Quran. Now Uthman ibn Affan, what he did was, he was sent a person with every single Quran. Remember, he had a couple of them, Adad al Um, He was sent them to go, for example, take a, a Quran to Bahrain, take another copy to Sham, he will send a person with the Quran and go to Sham. Now, the different type of ways people used to read Quran, we will erase all those methods. Everyone will recite the Quran according to one method, which is this method that we have right here. So because of people different, um, disagreed and they used to make each other kufar, Osman came up with this idea. Everyone will recite the Quran according to one single method. And I'm gonna repeat again. This method is not about the Qiraat. Again, all right? It's not about the Qiraat. So, Osman ibn Affan, he, some said he made um, four copies. The ones that said he made four copies, he, they said Osman ibn Affan, he sent a copy to Kufa. And he sent another copy to Basra. And he sent a third copy to Sham. And he himself had one copy, which is four. Some said, no, it's not four, it's actually five. The ones that said it's five, they said he sent the fifth copy to Mecca. Some said it's six. They said he sent the sixth copy to Bahrain. Some said it's seven. They said the seventh copy was sent to Yemen. Is then Usman, Usman ibn Affan, the difference between his jammer and the other jammer, when he um, told the companion
and he should um, compile the Quran, he sends to these countries, they are states or countries, the great data. Sham is like a whole, yeah. So it's not like one kind of. At the time, yeah. So um, he will send this Quran to Sham and Bahrain Kaja. He will send them with um, a person that will go and teach them and say, Amir al Mu'minin Uthman ibn Asan, he said, No one should recite the Quran any other way but this copy that I just came with. Because of people had lots of disagreements. So he wanted everyone to come together for the disagreement too. To finish, was it? Faisal Uthman ibn Affan, he came with this jump. We have two more chapters. We're gonna skip the Nasir and Mansur. It's very important, but we're gonna skip it and we're gonna go to the Al Qiraat because we are out of time. The Al Qiraat is something um, Sheikh Ibrahim, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he has all the Qiraat. As we sit right here, Alhamdulillah, he just told me that he actually completed. Um, the Qiraat al Ashr as well. He completed it. So, Alhamdulillah, I pray. Wallah, um, I'm not saying it because of he is sitting down next to me. Um, lots of people will come to me and ask me, um, do you have a Quran class? I will say to them, um, Ibrahim, Sheikh Ibrahim being here in America is enough. I shouldn't even have a Quran class because Ibrahim will be able to teach me and you the Quran. So let's all go to him and learn from him. Well, let's all go to him and um, learn from him. So, Alhamdulillah, um, I myself, um, even though I'm not a serious student, uh, I was, you know, taking a qira'ah from him, but I didn't complete it, because I was not serious. Ibrahim Sinna. Ibrahim Sinna. Ibrahim Sinna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hafidha ka'ala hafidha ka'ala. So, the, the qira'at, they have a shuboot. They have, a, they have conditions. They had three conditions. For you to even be able to have a kirada, they had three conditions. Two conditions. Awalan, the kirada that you have, it has to match with the Lua al Arabiya. Leanna, the Quran was revealed to Prophet in the Lua of Quraysh, which is the Lua al Arabiya. So it has to, you know, meet, it has to be some, some um, uh, the words have to be actually something that, you know, is Lua al Arabiya. And the, th the second one is Muwafaqat Ahad al Masahif. He has to agree with one of the Mus'hafs Uthman ibn Affan had. How many Mus'hafs he had? How many Mus'hafs he sent away? Four, five, six, or seven? Huh? Yes, you know, some said four, five, six, or they all correct. Well, then, um, there's a point that I want to mention. When they was combining during the time of Uthman, this Ahl of Sabra was still there. Lidalika, amongst the things he's told them to do, whenever you come across a word that can actually take two different ways, write the word down in a way people can read it two different ways. For example, in Ya'akum Fazakum bin Abarim, if you take a pen right here and write Fatabayanu without putting the dots, without putting the dots, someone can actually read it as Fatazabatu. So Rasman told them to um, write the Quran in this um, version. They have to write the Quran like this. Or for example, if you come to Ya'amalu and Ta'amalu, if they don't put no haraka on it, that they don't put the dots, you can read it as Ya'amalu. The same way you can read it as Ta'amalu. So this is what Usman told him to do. Well, this is what Usman told him to do. So the second condition, I just mentioned this because it's going to help us understand. The second condition is, the Qira'a you had, it had to um, Muwafaqa. It has to agree with one of the Musaf that Usman had. If you say 754, it had to agree with one of these. Was it? It cannot be something that, you know, Rasmai's Masahim, none of them had. It has to agree with one of them. The third one is Shehatul Isna. The chain has to be authentic. Was it? Um, we're just going to move on. For the Qiraat, we have the Qiraat is seven. Well, all the, the second, the seven um, types of Qiraat. Lots of people were mixed. They do not know the difference between the um, Arawi and Aqari. Well, the the Ruas and the Qurra. They do not know the difference. 
just briefly, briefly, um, I'm gonna just give an example for everyone to be able to understand. The Quran, let's go ahead and have like different type of tabaqats. For example, the Quran, they are the ones that are the first level. They are on the first level. So whoever came after them, the ones that came after them, either they took it directly or they took it by the wasita, they're gonna be the ruwat. Ruwat means that you took it from him. Was it? So the Quran, they the ones that actually they are the Ashabu Quran. And now they have the ones that came after them, which are the, the Ruwas. So if you look at the Quran, you know, there are seven, and um Qiraat al Sabra wa Qadata Aashir Aidan and um the Qiraat Shahza Aidan or my but we're just gonna mention these seven. The seven of Quran. Was it? So if you look at each qari that we have, has two different Yani uh was it? So this a qari and every single qari has two um, um people that took the qira'a from him, the, uh, the riwayah from him. Was it? So we're gonna go by the order that came in a shatibiya. Was it? We're gonna go the order by um it came in uh a shatibiya. So Shaykh Ibrahim, Allah. He memorized the whole entire Shatibiyah as well. Um, <coughs> <huh? laughs> someone asked me, they was like, did you remember Shatibiyah? I'm like, no. They was like, why? I said, to be honest, I'm being so honest. Uh, the books, مثلاً, the Al-Fiyat al-Iraqi or Al-Fiyat ibn Malik, these are all books that they call like the Al-Fiyat. The one Al-Fiyat that I'm actually scared to even memorize the Shatibiyah. It's, it's kind of hard. It's really good. SubhanAllah, when you're reciting it, it's so, you enjoy it. But I'm scared of memorizing it. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me to um, be able to memorize it. I'm um, Shaykh Ibrahim. Hafizah <coughs> Allah, we're gonna go by the order he came in Shatibiyah. So Ibrahim can recite um, the um, parts of Shatibiyah, inshallah ta'ala. I'm gonna just mention one of them and then you, 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 you go ahead. Because we don't have time. So the first part is, According to the Shatibiyya, the first Qari is Nafi'a. Nafi'a ibn Abdul Rahman, ibn Abi Nu'ayn, Al-Madani. Nafi'a is someone from, from Medina. Well, then, <coughs> and the riwayas he had, riwayah wa qalun wa kadalika warsh. And the second Qari, and Nafi'a, he passed away during the year after 169 after migration. 169 after migration. The second Qari we have is Ibn Kathir al Makki. Ibn Kathir was from Mecca. Father Abdullah Ibn Kathir. For the, um, he passed away during the year 120 after migration. And the two rewires, the two um, uh, people that reported or took from him is Al Bazi wa Kadalika Umbula wa Kadalika Umbul. For number three is Abu Amr. Abu Amr ibn Ala al Basri. He's from Basra. He passed away the year 154. Was it? And the two rewires, you know, is Aduri wa Asusi. Wa Kadalika number four is Ibn Amr. Al Shami. He's from Sham. For Abdullah ibn Amr al Yaqsali. So he passed away during the year 118. 118. He's the first party that passed away. Well, he's the first one. Um, he passed away during the year 118. And he, the is the one that took from his, him is Hisham and Ibn Zakwa. Number five is Asim. Asim. Ibn Abi Najula. Al Kufi. He's from Kufa. He passed away during the year 127. Fa the two rewires we have is Shu'ba and Hafs. And Hafs is the Qira that is really popular in our society. That's the Qira we do. Um, number six is Hamza. As a yes. Hamza passed away the year 158. And the two is um, Khalaf and Khalad. Well, then, and this is the Qira I was taking from him. Uh, Qira of Hamza. The, second, the, the last one, the seventh, is Al-Kisai. Al-Kisai passed away during the year 
189 and the two riwayas is Abu Al-Harith wa kathalika Al-Duli and Shaykh Ibrahim inshallah ta'ala is gonna recite um, where Al-Shatibi uh, mentioned the Qira'ah where it's a father, is that the Qira'ah? Is that a Okay, inshallah, what I'm, going, what I'm going to be reciting is going to be the seven that Imam Shah to be mentioned in the book. The Qari and both Rawis of the, uh, of the, the two students of the Qari. Okay? So I'm not going to start right away, but from where he started thinking, you know, Jazallah bil khayrat anna imatan, and then he will explain the seven, inshallah. Jazallah bil khayrat anna imatan, lana naqalu al Quran azban wa sarsala. فمنهم بدور سبعة قد توسطت سماء العلا والعدل زهرا وكملا لها شوب عنها استنارت فنورت سواد الدجا حتى تفرق وانجلا وسوف تراهم واحدا بعد واحد مع اثنين من أصحابه متمثلا تخيرهم نقادهم كل بارع وليس على قرآنه متأكلا فأما الكريم السر في الطيب نافع فذاك الذي اختار المدينة منزلا وقالوا نعيسى ثم عثمان ورشهم لصحبته المجد الرفيع تأثلا ومكة عبد الله فيها مقامه هو ابن كثير كاثر القوم معتلا روى أحمد البزي له ومحمد على سند وهو الملقب قنبلا وأما الإمام المازني صريحهم أبو عمرو البصري فوالده العلا أفاض على يحيى اليزيدي سيبه فأصبح بالعذب الفرات معللا أبو عمر الدوري وصالحهم أبو شعيب هو السوسي عنه تقبلا وأما دمشق الشام دار بن عامر فتلك بعبد الله طابت محللا هشام وعبد الله وهو انتسابه إذا كان بالإسناد عنه تنقلا وبالكوفة الغراء منهم ثلاثة أذاعوا فقد ضاعت شذا وقرنفلا فأما أبو بكر وعاصم اسمه فشعبة راويه المبرز أفضلا وذاك بن عياش أبو بكر الرضا وحفص وبالإتقان كان مفضلا وحمزة ما أزكاه من متورع إمام صبر للقرى المرتلا روى خلف عنه وخلاد الذي رواه سليم متقنا ومحصلا وعما علي فالكسائي نعته وأما علي فالكسائي نعته لما كان في الإحرام فيه تسربلا روى ليثهم عنه أبو الحارث الرضا وحفص هو الدور وفي الذكر قد خلا أبو عمرهم واليحصبي بن عامر صليح وباقيهم أحاط به الولاء Jazakallah khairan and Shaykh Ibrahim. That was really beautiful. But inshallah ta'ala, that will be the end. Um, Ustaz um, uh, Jabrana is here. Bismillah ta'ala, he will give the closing remarks. Bismillah ta'ala, and we will end it. Um, as I said, um, we skipped a lot of things. We skipped a lot of, we skipped a lot of things. But inshallah ta'ala, in the future, we will have this type of class, inshallah. When you are leaving the masjid, the sisters, um, I think for going to have like, um, barcodes upstairs and um, for the uh, for the boys inshallah there's a barcode at the door and this one here um scan it put your name and inshallah you will have like a digit um a digit um a digital um certificate sent to your email inshallah within two weeks being in line time <coughs> We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
I don't have anything to say right like now. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> what we have today is great. Just I wanna tell everybody, all the brothers and sisters, we have something nobody has it. Prophet says, if Allah give you the knowledge of Quran, nobody has something like you. Keep unto the Quran to know and memorize and understand the meaning of Quran with the authentic way. Don't read every book. He's talking about Quran. Don't read from every person who's talking about Quran. Make sure you learn the Quran from correct way, from correct teachers, and who telling you the meaning with authentically way. Nobody have knowledge like you if you know Quran. Memorize Quran and make sure you try your best to know the meaning of Quran. That is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The best among you is the one who knows Quran and teach others. This only I want to say right now because the time Barakallahu Fikum Big effort It was raining a lot today Many of you come They wait The time they enter in the masjid All the clothes are wet Today But still you can Keep on going Make sure you're doing that for the sake of Allah You're looking for Jannah you're not looking for anything from your effort. Make sure you renew your class, your intention always do for sake of Allah. Allah gonna increase more and more for you. May Allah give you your reward in Jannah and accept our deeds. Barakallahu feekum. And our son, I don't know what to tell him. I'm just asking Allah. Allah give us more, more and more youth like him and all of the other brothers too. Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillah. Like, um, I think that's the end of it. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us like um, days like this, inshallah. As I said, um, we have a group and we're working on it, bi to um, come together and always like, you know, have the youths come together and have these um, kind of classes, bi ta'ala. So I pray may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it possible and make it beneficial as well. So the sisters, inshallah, just if not here. I just hope they didn't took all the foods upstairs. Uh, we need some downstairs as well, all right? The foods, you could um, have some downstairs as well for the brothers. They will be if not here, inshallah. Um, the sisters will go up and the brothers will be um, downstairs, inshallah. Uh, let's wait for the sisters to go first and then we um, can start leaving. I think it will be safe for you guys to leave through um, the front and go upstairs. Nah. Huh? Yeah. MSG TV, New York.